Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Technology in Your Industry. Uh, my name is Aaron Brennan. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Vipar. And my guest this week is Ben Tice, who is the CEO of Skoll Marketing up in, uh, up in Minnesota, right? Is, is that yep, where you are, Ben? that's right. Nice, nice. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your business and what you do and, and who you work with. Yeah. Um, well, so actually, you know, Aaron and I used to work at Google together. And since we both of us have done different ventures, I've spun off and started my own company. Um, again, School Marketing is an internet marketing agency here in Minnesota that we help small business owners and nonprofits with their technology and internet um, you know, uh, marketing needs. So we do website development, search engine optimization, social media, and work a lot with Google and video conferencing. Very cool, very cool. So, um, so kind of how has that spin-off been for you from working at Google to now owning your own business that's, that's working with uh, small businesses and nonprofits? Yeah, well, it's been a great transition because we worked with, we worked with small business owners and nonprofits with Google, but obviously in a different capacity. Um, now we, you know, we do a lot more hands-on work with them. We do a lot more uh, from the start to the finish, whereas Google is a lot more education and just kind of getting people going. Um, so it's been a little bit of a transition now, obviously, again, being in charge of everything, managing other people um, within the organization. And so, yeah, having everything flow up right up to you being the top dog. So uh, obviously, again, a little bit of transition, but loving it so far and uh, going very well. That's so. awesome. I'm really happy that things are going well for you. Uh, tell me Thanks. a little bit about the technology that you use on sort of an everyday basis um, and where you sort of see that technology helping you. Yeah, so again, we use our basic technology with our smartphones and our you know computers and stuff like that. But some of the more a little bit more advanced technology from some other people is more kind of the video conferencing, um, you know, software. You know, even though we're based here in Minnesota, we obviously need technology, and we have clients across the country. You know, again, if that's New York, if that's Texas, Seattle, wherever we have clients, we obviously need to be able to communicate with them. And sometimes the phone just isn't enough. So video conferencing with Google Plus Hangouts and other kind of uh, you know Skype and other kind of technologies allow us to. Be be able to connect with them and to be able to, to actually engage with clients, um, you know, in, in those capacities. Yeah, very cool. So, so you you're working with a lot of nonprofits and, and small businesses. Are you seeing a need there for technology and use of technology um, to help grow their business and, and maybe either market it or be more um, efficient with the way they use technology? Or do you see oh. that they're sort of happy with where they are? No, 100%. They, they do. And what's great about it is, you know, we're actually seeing this huge trend of, you know, nonprofits and small business owners, you know, actually realizing it. I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, as marketers like yourself and myself, you know, kind of struggle with sometimes. If a company doesn't realize they need, you know, technology, if they don't realize they need to grow, it's really hard to help them. The, the great thing about, you know, I mean, the, the nonprofits and small business owners, I think, in today's world is they realize that they need to but they sometimes don't know where to go and they just need that helping hand. And that's where, again, we can come in and play and we can actually start to help them with that and you know, help them institute and integrate a lot of these technology tools into their day-to-day -day business. That's awesome. So, so what do you see as sort of the biggest jump where like small businesses and nonprofits need sort of the most technology help? Is it a, is it a communication thing where they need to upgrade their email or their the way they, you know, their phone conference systems or their, even just their video conference system, or are you seeing a bigger jump from like the marketing side where they need to be more interactive with technology and a social aspect and, and social engagement um, with their, either the, A, their customers or, or B, their users and their followers if it comes to a nonprofit? I, well, I, th I think um, I think it kind of depends on what who we're working with and kind of the different level they're on. Um, what we're seeing kind of right now is that you know you know there, there's a lot of small business owners there that have had kind of the websites that have had some of that technology, but they maybe just need to upgrade it. But I think where a lot of them are really lacking has been kind of the whole email and the communication systems, either with their current colleagues or their clients and customers. And sometimes that obviously is going to deal with the website. Um, but, you know, again, even with email and video conferencing, like these tools have really like sometimes obviously email has been around, but like, you know, you know, sophisticated video conferencing and phone systems are very new to the new to a lot of the customer clients we're dealing with. Whereas like a website, they know about it. They probably had one. It probably needs to be sophisticated. It's not sophisticated enough. And that's where we come and either rebuild it or help them, you know, upgrade it. 
Whereas like, again, the difference is, is like, you know, again, we work with them on like their email system or their video conferencing system. They literally had little to bear, you know, the bare bones of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a vast, you know, I mean, opportunity to show them the, you know, this great opportunity that technology has to offer them Mm -hmm. in today's world. Nice. Very cool. Um, You know, you, your background is a lot in marketing and, and, and engagement with people as well as mine is. Um, where do you see um, sort of technology going from an engagement standpoint with um, your customers or consumers? Um, yeah. Do you see Facebook sort of growing off, or do you see you know these type of hangouts that you know uh, have been sort of quickly growing in, in sort of uh, the, that space to, to engage with customers? Yeah, I, no, I really do see like you know again like Google Hangouts. We actually just gave a presentation on Tuesday for Google Plus Hangouts. It was very well received, especially for the midsummer here up in the Midwest. Um, getting small business owners to come um, away from their cabins and actually come and sit down and listen to us. Yeah. Uh, and so, but no, I think you know, I mean, again, video conferencing. I think it's going to be huge and, and very critical going forward because we're becoming so virtual. You know, again, it's becoming so widely accepted that you can work from home that even though you're a Minnesota-based company and you work with small business owners and you have that personal touch, that doesn't necessarily mean you just work with Minnesotans. You know, again, we can have clients all across the country and really all across the world because of the technology that gives us. And we can kind of break down these barriers and I can still kind of do relationship building. I can still get to know you. I can still have meetings with you because of this technology and the layers that the technology allows us to accomplish. Okay. So so when it comes to, uh, to a small business, do you think there's some sort of apprehension on a lot of small businesses, there is some apprehension out there to embrace technology or change the way you're doing things. Why do you think there is that sort of apprehension or, you know, to take on new technology or a new way to do things within a small to medium to nonprofit size? Yeah, I think it really comes down to lack of education. Again, they, they know that it's out there and I think in the back of their mind they really do know that it's better. But again, it's the lack of education. So again, if, if it just as human, you know, human nature is that if we don't know something or if we're not very well educated in it, we get a little scared of it. And so, and that's just human nature and that's for everything. And so I think you see that a lot of times with small business owners is that they realize technology is out there, but they're just so misinformed and, and miseducated, you know, uneducated about it that again, that's what kind of breeds this, you know, apprehension there. And so that's what we try to do. We really strive to, we do tons of workshops, we do hangouts, we do webinars to try to break down those barriers and to really help these small business owners and nonprofits be able to be well educated and then make you know sound decisions going forward with technology and internet marketing. That's awesome. That's that's great. That's great to hear that you're you're out there educating people and, and kind of yeah. going forward. Um, so you've you know kind of experienced Lime a little bit, which is our interactive yeah. virtual um, mobile to mobile application. Where do you sort of see that use case going forward? You know the fact that you can reach in with your hands. Um, and, and you know, kind of help solve problems together. Do you see uh, do you see sort of a use case for that in some of the small, to medium sized businesses or organizations you're working with? No, absolutely. You know, again, what, what I say is like you know, if we talked about kind of breaking down these layers. I really think Lime, you know, I mean, do, breaks down another layer. You know, again, where we had you know email, then we had kind of you know we have phone, we have you know video conferencing. You know, even with Google Plus Hangouts, we have remote desktop, which is you know almost a step, you know, almost like a 1.0 to Lime. Now I think, you know, Lime is almost a 2.0 on a remote desktop where instead of me taking over your desktop and quickly doing it, I can actually interact with you now and actually almost be in the room with you, not just seeing what you're doing in the room and then trying to describe or try to tell you what to do. Now I can actually almost, you know, in a sense, almost physically, you know, physically, virtually be in the room with you and be able to interact. So I really, you know, do think I'm really excited about the, you know, the app to be able to interact more with clients, colleagues and customers, um, you know, from that point of view. That's awesome. That's, that's great to hear. I know we're really excited about it and, and really excited to hear how people are going to use it moving forward. Um, so I'm glad you think that. We, we have the same sort of idea behind it, thinking that it's, it's going to grow and build. Um, so where would you want to see the biggest, you know, and you know, I know you and I have both worked at Google. Where would you want to see the biggest next step growth in technology? Um, I think... I think the biggest, you know, I mean, next step is really kind of, 
honestly, you know, I mean, again, really kind of perfecting what we have here, you know, what I mean? and, and really, honestly, my thing is streamlining everything. And I know Google's, you know, and a lot of other companies are really trying to do that. And, um, you know, Google just came out with Google My Business, you know, another kind of trying to mm -hmm. update to Google Places, Google uh, Plus kind of system. I think, you know, I mean, our really next step is really trying to connect everything that we have right now. And, you know, I mean, again, streamline everything. And I think that's what a lot of these tools are trying to do. And, you know, again, playing nice with each other. And I think that's sometimes the biggest issue that we sometimes run into <laughs> with technology is obviously playing nice with each other. Yeah. But I think, you know, again, if we're going to keep going, you know, and progressing in the future, I think that's eventually, I think that's our next step is a little bit more cohesion that we, that we've, than we've had before. That's awesome. I totally agree. It's, it's the playing nice with each other that seems to be the biggest obstacle. You know, mm -hmm. even for us when we're building a product, it's just like, now we got to get all the technology to play nice with our product so we can we can get it you know useful yeah. to everybody's hands. So awesome, very cool. So I ask everybody the same question before I go because you know I've been in technology for ten years. You've been in technology for many years now, um, and I know what mine is. And I always say that my favorite technology was when I got my first iPhone, and everything condensed down from you know having a smartphone, which was an Android phone, plus a uh, you know, my iPod that was in my back pocket, I had and my wallet in my other pocket, my keys in my other, I had something in every pocket, and all of a sudden the iPhones shrunk that all down into one spot where I had my, everything all together, I could access the internet and, and do everything. It was my favorite technology, it was switching to my mm -hmm. iPhone. Um, what is your favorite technology, ever? So like I would say like my favorite one, you know, obviously has to be a smartphone because we run out of out of you know everything out of it. But I think where my eyes were open like the first time where I was just like, whoa, like you know, I mean, technology is going great. Is I actually didn't get an iPod. I had a Dell Pocket DJ, which was Dell's version of an iPod, and I loved when I was a kid like being able to take all my CDs instead of having the whole book or whatever and have the whole big book in your backpack. You know, have all those in, my, in the palm of my hand, and that was like where I really like my eyes were open. Like, wow, technology's great. So that was like my first experience, like, whoa. And then, but obviously, again, my favorite would be my smartphone now. <laughs> ben, I think you're the only person I've ever met that's had one of the Dell music players. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so, well, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, one last question. Do you miss working at Google? Um, I miss it, but I, it was a good experience, but I'm glad where I am now. And, you know, again, no regrets, and I wouldn't change anything for the world, so... That's awesome. Really happy to hear that for you, man. Um, and if people want to find you or, or look up more information or, you know, use you to be educated, but, you know, about technology and, and where technology is going uh, for small and medium-sized businesses, how do they contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find us on the web at skolmarketing.com, and you can see the spelling down here at the screen, but it's skolmarketing.com. Otherwise, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Google+. Plus. You can find School Marketing on all the other social media platforms as well. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. If you want to do a Google+, Plus Hangout, we a lot of times will just jump on a Hangout with um, uh, clients or you know, I mean, customers that just have simple questions. Shoot me an email. I'm, I'm more than happy. I love educating people, love helping people, love networking. So feel free to reach out and would love to network more with people. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, if Thanks, you want Eric. to find out more information about Vipar or Lime, our new beta mobile to mobile product that's in beta, uh, please visit us at www.limeapp.me. That's www.limeapp.me. You can also, also follow us on all our social media, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and even LinkedIn. Thanks for watching, everybody.